not pass me by Let me at a throne of mercy Find a sweet relief Kneeling there in deep country Help my unbelief Savior, Savior Hear my humble cry Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to our service. Uh, the rector is doing well and sends her love. The communion service today will be at 11.15 at Bishop Wilton, next week in St Andrew's Bogthorpe and the 18th of October will see us celebrating an online harvest service at 10 o'clock and then um, a simple harvest communion um, with um, harvest music at 11.15 at Kirby Underdale.
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His glories never end. They are new every morning. New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us a desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbours and all creation, and to devote each day to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, word of life, when we treat our words lightly, when we are partial and prejudiced, when our words inflame rather than bring peace, Lord have mercy. When we fail to tame our tongues and our words are not filled with grace and love, when we praise you, yet insult our brothers and sisters, when our words wound and corrupt. Lord, have mercy. When our words are proud and self-seeking, when we convey envy and ambition instead of mercy and sincerity, when our humour is hurtful instead of joyful. Lord, have mercy. Grant us that heavenly wisdom that we might live as your people, that we might bring peace and harvest righteousness and see your kingdom come. Holy God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us into the way of righteousness. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts, and draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God, based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. <clears throat> Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realised that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds, because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. On last Tuesday, the 29th of September, the Church celebrated the Feast of St Michael and All Angels. If we had been medieval Christians, this would have been an important feast and would have felt a bit like our Harvest Festival, with the offering of first fruits and well-dressing. Since the Reformation, though, it has been the custom to have separate harvest festivals, but Michaelmas is still celebrated in surprising ways. Coinciding with one of the quarter days, the autumn equinox, it was when dues were paid, and the Goose Fair at Nottingham recollects this tradition. In the Hebrides, there is the tradition of cooking St Michael's bannock, made from barley, oats and rye. It's a bit like a sort of a scone. And when it was eaten, people would remember absent friends and those who had died. A special baking of the bannock was also given out at the Eucharist at the Mass on St Michael's Day, and that was to be given to the poor. For our forebears, the autumn equinox was a sign that winter was approaching. The nights were drawing in, and without electricity, central heating and supermarkets, it was an uncertain and scary time. The feast of St Michael and All Angels gave hope. <clears throat> in the sharing of the bannock, there was a commitment to care for the vulnerable and also to remember that light always overcomes darkness, even the darkness of death and loss, when absent friends and the departed are remembered at the feast. As I looked into the history of the feast, I felt it was especially relevant to us as we face an uncertain autumn and winter, that we should face it with hope and a commitment to look out for each other. 
we often use the expression, be an angel and go and get me a cup of tea, or she was such an angel coming to see me. It is as if we still have a sense of angels, even if perhaps we don't think of them with big wings and flying about the place. The Greek word angelos, from which our word angel comes, means God's messenger. And in very practical ways, we can each share in the angelic ministry, inspired by the archangels Michael, Gabriel and Raphael. Michael is often depicted with a sword and is described in the book of Revelation as defeating Satan and the other angels who rebelled against God. We can take this as a reminder to be courageous in standing up for what is right and defeating injustice. Sometimes being firm in the face of something we know to be wrong can be difficult. It need not be anything too dramatic. Simply refusing to join in gossip can be a powerful witness to doing the right thing. But as Christians, we have a duty to stand up and bring light where there is the darkness of hatred, division and injustice. Ours isn't always an easy calling. Gabriel, whom we meet announcing the coming of Jesus to Mary at the Annunciation, has a name which means God is my strength. In the Old Testament book of Judges, Gabriel is sent to Gideon at a time when none of God's promises are coming about and the Israelites are being oppressed by neighbouring tribes. Gabriel greets Gideon by saying, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Looking around, Gideon may well have felt like saying, Are you having a laugh? And he does in fact share some of his hopelessness with Gabriel, who then reassures him that God will help him to see things through and liberate Israel. We may not be called to do something quite like Gideon, but we can certainly feel despairing at times, feeling as though God is a long way away. At such times, we can call on Gabriel and be reminded that for each of us, God is our strength and his promises will be fulfilled. The name of the third archangel, Raphael, means God is my healer. At this time particularly, Raphael reminds us to pray and give thanks for all in the healing professions. But Raphael also reminds us to share in God's work of healing ourselves by supporting and reaching out to others and also by sharing with God the broken parts of ourselves that need his healing touch. The things that can get in the way of loving God, ourselves and other people. There are also stories of encounters that might well have been angelic, but were certainly mysterious. The 8th century St Cuthbert was looking after the guest house in the monastery at Ripon. He went in early one morning to find a young man trying to warm up, having walked through the snow. He was wet and cold, with poor clothing and footwear. Cuthbert got warm water and washed the young man's feet and his hands and then promised to go to the guest house to get fresh loaf for his breakfast. But when he returned, the young man had gone. But there were no tracks in the fresh snow when Cuthbert looked around the guest house. And then when he went in again, he saw three fresh loaves and the place was filled with a lovely smell. Cuthbert had thought it was him helping the stranger, 
but perhaps it was the other way around. And Cuthbert remembered the words, Do not forget to show your love to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Another mysterious story that raises the question of our guardian angels was told at a service in Westminster Abbey, which used to be where I went to church when I worked in London. Over a hundred years ago, Ernest Shackleton and two colleagues reached Stromness, a whaling station on the north coast of South Georgia. They had been walking for 36 hours in life-threatening conditions in an attempt to reach help for the rest of their party. Three of their crew were stuck on the south side of the island with the remainder stranded on Elephant Island. To reach the whaling station, the three men had to cross the island's mountainous interior with just a rope and an axe in a journey that few had attempted before or since. By reaching Stromness, they managed to save all the men left from the ill-fated Transantarctic expedition. They didn't talk about it at the time, but weeks later, all three men reported an uncanny experience during their trek, a feeling that often there were four, not three men, on their journey. The fourth that accompanied them had the silent presence of a real person, someone walking with them by their side as far as the whaling station but no further. Shackleton was apparently deeply affected by this experience but would say little about it in subsequent years, considering it something which can never be spoken of. Encounters such as these are common in extreme survival situations. Guardian angels, guides or even Christ-like figures have often been reported. We know them now as third man experiences following a line in T.S. Eliot's poem The Wasteland. Who is the third who always walks beside you? When I count, there are only you and I together. But when I look up the white road, there is always another one walking beside you. So whether or not we are conscious of meeting angels, sometimes they can meet us in surprising ways. And we can certainly be inspired by their example to stand up for what is right, to draw on God's strength for ourselves and others in this difficult time, and to share his work of healing by showing kindness, care and hospitality, always knowing that actually we are never alone. Our guardian angels and the Spirit of God and the presence of Christ are there to support us in the darkest and most difficult of times, bringing us light and hope. The Collect for Michaelmas Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the ministries of angels and mortals in a wonderful order. Grant that as your holy angels always serve you in heaven, so at your command they may help and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the ministry of angels as they worship you and exercise your ministry of love here on earth. We ask that you would inspire governments to work to build kingdoms of justice and peace where the rights of the poor are defended. We remember people coping with COVID who don't have proper access to health and basic amenities. 
we ask that as each of us seek to follow the example of St Michael, that we too will have the courage and vision to stand up for what is right and be generous in our support of those who are poorer than ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we think of St Gabriel as a sign of your strength, we ask that you would help each of us at this time to have a vision to sustain us when the going gets tough and we are tempted to despair. We pray for our benefits, for our places of work and recreation, that we may always be signs of hope and love to others, inspired by the hope and love you share with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, St Raphael reminds us of your healing and your desire to make all things new. We pray for all in the NHS and for everyone who works to enable us to live peaceful and healthy lives. We give thanks for all who work in agriculture and for the gifts of the harvest. We pray for all who work in shops, enabling us to have the things that we need. And we pray especially for all those involved in our local shops here in Bishop Wilton and Bugthorpe. We pray for all in hospital, hospice, or being cared for at home. We remember all who have died and are now caught up into the life of heaven with the saints, the angels and archangels, worshipping you forever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I will sing of my Redeemer and His wondrous love to me on the cruel he suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, O oh, sing of my Redeemer with his blood, he purchased me on the cross, he sealed my part. triumphant power I'll 
As we leave this time of worship, while so much of the road ahead is uncertain and the path constantly changing, we know some things that are as solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our heads. We know God is love. We know Christ's light endures. We know the Holy Spirit is there, found in the spaces between all things, closer to us than our next breath, and binding us to each other until we meet again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon each of you, upon your homes and all whom you love today and always. Amen. With love and compassion, Lord Jesus be with us. In our homes and places of work, Lord Jesus be with us. In our hearts and in our minds, Lord Jesus be with us. In power and glory, Lord Jesus, be with us. I hope you have a lovely, peaceful day and can enjoy the blue sky and the sunshine while we have it. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.
Peace.